Okay, we uh, welcome all of our friends from other countries and those of you who um, cannot attend the live service but choose to listen to the recording. <clears throat> we thank God for the anointing that's on the recording, that as we record these messages, God blesses. And so wherever you are, whatever nation you are in, Jesus is Lord and God loves you. And we just thank God for his love. We're going to uh, get into um, worship and praise and um, ask you to join, join us with a, uh, a song uh, and praise God and worship him as we hear from our friend Kevin Wilson. Kevin Wilson out of Kentucky. And we don't have the rights to the, these songs, but Kevin has given us his permission Hey, Facebook. Hey, YouTube. Kevin Wilson has given us <coughs> his permission to play these songs. And, and we, pray, we praise God for Kevin Wilson. He's generous and kind. And uh, we're going to listen to a song by Kevin Wilson. And it, this is called Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. Don't Sweat the Small Stuff.
You heard him, ladies and gentlemen. You heard Kevin Wilson say, don't sweat the small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. <clears throat> it's all small stuff. Don't sweat it. Don't worry about it. Jesus is Lord. Hey, we give a shout out to uh, Dustina's children, Destiny and Nathan, who celebrated their birthdays this week. Happy birthday to you guys. And uh, we'll greet your household, Dustina, and greet all of you in the name of Jesus. Karen's with us from uh, Pennsylvania. Praise God. We thank God for Karen and for a whole lot of other people. Praise God. We're going to take a look at a powerful passage of scripture today and look at a message that, uh, you know, a lot of preachers are going to be are afraid to preach what I'm going to preach today. And I'm going to preach it. You know, and a lot of people don't want to hear this kind of message because uh, this message brings you under conviction. But, you know, I would rather come under conviction and, and have an opportunity to repent than to uh, continue going along being deceived and, and have to face God and give an account for allowing myself, allowing myself to be deceived. We're going to talk about blasphemy today. Blasphemy. We're going to talk about blasphemy. It's a word that most people, when they see it in the Bible, they just gloss over it. Some people don't even take time to get a dictionary to see what it means. And most people don't even seek the Holy Spirit for what it means. But today we're going to talk about the danger of blasphemy. Blasphemy. This is something that the church is doing. A lot of Christians are doing it and not even realizing it. But God's going to give us an opportunity to get corrected today. So we're going to uh, ask Jackie Fisher if she will come and uh, read the scripture for us. Jackie's going to be reading from Matthew chapter 7, verses 31 through 37. Welcome back, Jackie Fisher. We missed you last week. Jackie's going to be reading from Matthew chapter 12, Matthew 12, verses 31 through 37. All right. Good morning, Pastor Carter. Good morning, Jackie. Church. Uh, this will be the reading of Matthew 12, 31 through 37 today. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt, and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Matthew 12, 1, 31 through 37 is the reading of the word today. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, uh, it, isn't it a joy to have Jackie Fisher read the word and read it so well and make it plain? We thank you. We thank you. Um, <clears throat> some ways may say, well, that's just a little thing. No, it's a big thing. She's reading the word of God, and she reads it well. She articulates so that people can understand what the Lord is saying. <clears throat> so we thank God for Jackie Fisher and Russell Fisher and their household and pray mighty blessings upon them. And um, don't think that your work is, is in vain. Reading the Word of God is very, very important. Ladies and gentlemen, Jackie read from Matthew chapter 12, 31 through 37, and it talks about blasphemy. I want to I preach today about 
the danger of blasphemy, the danger of blasphemy. Or if uh, uh, if I were to choose another subject, my subject would be, are you committing blasphemy? Everybody say blasphemy, blasphemy. Me. That's pronounced. Don't be afraid to pronounce these words. Blasphemy. And I pray that you'll go over and read that scripture later on today. And um, actually, uh, later on also get the recording and play it over and over again because God does not want us falling into error. And, and a lot of people are operating today, ladies and gentlemen, in blasphemy. We have, are blaspheming against God. And, and, and the scripture warns us about blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. So pay attention and, and um, uh, listen to this message and let the Holy Spirit minister to us today. And then uh, if we find that we're in areas where we should not be, we need to just repent and, and get out of it, and, 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 and uh, don't sweat the small stuff. Just get out of it. Uh, but if we remain in, 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 in sin, then there's danger. So we don't want to go further into the danger zone. Let us pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you, Father. We humble ourselves before you in Jesus' name. Father God, we ask that you forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Father God, we pray that you give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Enlighten us, Lord. Teach us from your word. Then, God, we pray that people will be saved today and that anyone in a backslidden condition will be redeemed, will be restored. You are the forgiving God. You're the living God. <clears throat> and so, God, let your word go forth in power and demonstration in the Holy Spirit. We pray that you'll stretch forth your mighty hand today to heal and deliver. And we bless you. We lift up this nation, God, that needs healing, that needs deliverance, that needs the word of God. We lift up our president and our leaders. We lift up the people. We lift up the church to you today. We lift up pastors and every believer. And Father, we pray for the households who are on board with us today and those listening by way of the recording that you will move mightily in our lives and we thank you in Jesus name Holy Spirit now we invite you to guide us in Jesus name Amen praise God well we're looking today at the subject uh, the danger of blasphemy or are you committing blasphemy and we get this from uh, the reading of the scripture. We heard Jackie Fisher read the scripture from Matthew chapter 12, verses 31 through 37. And let me just read uh, this again. Wherefore I say unto you, this is Jesus speaking, and he's speaking to us. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. So as we read this, we, we certainly want to know, what is blasphemy? And what is blasphemy against the Holy Ghost? And what's the difference between blasphemy against God and blasphemy against the Holy Ghost? And, and, and because if there's blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, then Jesus said there's no forgiveness. And whosoever, verse 32 speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. Jesus said, whoever speaks against the Son of Man, that will be forgiven him if that person repents. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. And so, church, we need to listen up to what Jesus is saying, brothers and sisters, we need everyone to pay attention to this message today. Verse 33, either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. We'll look at that too. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man, out of the good treasure of the heart, bringeth forth good things. 
and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak. Listen carefully to this. Verse 36 of chapter 12 of Matthew. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. That's powerful. Every idle word that we speak, ladies and gentlemen, we've got to give an account for every word that comes out of our mouth. Verse 37, for by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. I want to read 36 and 37 again. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. The Bible even warns us to let no corrupt communication proceed out of our mouths. Every idle word, every dumb word we've ever said, everything that had no meaning, everything that was uh, purposeless that we've said, whether we said it in honesty or in, in, in anger, every word that has come out of our mouth, we've got to give an account for every word before God at the judgment. And so we want to take a look today at this subject called blasphemy and see how it applies to us and how we can avoid it uh, because the Bible warns us that blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is unforgivable. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be powerful. It's going to, be, uh, it's going to cause people to change their lifestyles. It's going to cause a lot of people to take a closer look at the Lord and pay heed to the, to the Scriptures. And then, yes, yes, I know there are people who are going to blow it off because there are people, they don't want to hear this. You know, there, there are preachers who are afraid to preach uh, on this subject of blasphemy. And, there, uh, and it's sad, ladies and gentlemen, there are actually pastors who do not want their people, their people walking in the light. Ladies and gentlemen, that's sad. That's sad. Uh, we are to walk in the light as God has given us the light. And I, and I admonish you pastors to uh, preach the word of God so that people will not walk in darkness. Stop trying to build your own little kingdoms and, and building many yous and clones of you because you're not perfect. No, none of us is perfect. No, not one. There's only one perfect, and that's Jesus. And if anybody ought to be cloned, it ought to be Jesus ought to be cloned. But the church is supposed to be the clone of Jesus. We are to be just like him if we would do like him. So you pastors, you teachers, you so-called prophets, quit trying to make people after your own image and preach the word of God and teach the truth. And then believers, <clears throat> you have a responsibility to study the word of God. And I add, I add I admonish you believers. This is a, a, a rebuke to many believers. You call yourselves Christians, but you don't study the Word of God. No, I'm not angry with you, but I teach it the way it is. I preach the Word the way the Lord gives me to preach it. We have, we're under a mandate to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, workmen who needeth not to be ashamed. And as we just read, uh, that every idle word that men shall speak, they should give account thereof in the day of judgment. Uh, uh, you, you've heard it. You've heard it. At the judgment, you've got to give an account for every word. And if you did not study the word of God and you went, uh, you lived your life based on what reverend so-and-so was saying or what uh, bishop so-and-so was saying or what prophet so-and-so said, well, if bishop so-and-so is off base, if prophet so-and-so is off base, if pastor so-and-so is off base, and you've built your whole lifestyle based on what they say, you're going to miss God. And you've got to give an account before God. So it pays, it pays 
to obey God, the Bible says study to show yourself approved unto God. And if you're not studying, we give you an opportunity here at the Back to Basics Ministries to follow us every Wednesday night with a Bible study as we go through the Bible book by book every Wednesday night. It's free. It only costs you if you want to study for a degree. But the study is free. There is no excuse, ladies and gentlemen, for people saying, I don't know the Bible, because God has ministries like this and other ministries. We teach the Bible. We make the teachings available. And so the Bible says, thou art inexcusable, O man. Thou art inexcusable. Turn to somebody and say, there, you are inexcusable. There is no excuse for not knowing your Bible. Now, don't look at them all mean because they get angry with you, but with, put a smile on your face and say, you are without excuse. Learn the Bible. Study the Bible. Come and join us on Wednesday nights uh, <clears throat> and learn the Bible as we go book through book. There's no excuse for anybody, especially in America, not to know the books of the Bible from Genesis through Revelation because there are ministries like this that offer teachings on the books of the Bible, and we go through the word of God. So the Bible says, thou art without excuse, O man. But let's take a look at this thing called blasphemy, because you see it throughout the scriptures. And uh, blasphemy, what is it? Blasphemy is actually insulting God. To make it uh, brief, to give it a brief definition, blasphemy is the act of insulting God. You insult God, or I insult God. And whenever we insult God, we're committing blasphemy. Now, there are religions that stretch it even more. Blasphemy is insulting their God or their deity. For example, in Islam, there are nations, at least 32 nations, where a person can be put to death for insulting Allah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at this. <clears throat> in 32 nations in the world, and this is serious, this is real, you can be put to death by insulting Allah. Now, 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 look at it. Ladies and gentlemen, and I'm not afraid to preach this. I will, I will say this, and I'll stand on it. Allah is not God. Allah is not a God. Allah is a false God. The only God is the God of our, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's called Jehovah. He's known by other names, but Allah is not a God because the Muslims do not accept Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Allah is not God. God is God. He revealed his name to Moses as Jehovah, Yahweh, Yahweh is God, and Yahweh had a son, has a son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for the sins of the whole world. So ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about billions of people throughout the world who worship Allah and reject Jesus Christ. That's blasphemy, ladies and gentlemen. But yet, but yet in these religions, they will put people to death for blaspheming Allah. Now, isn't that ridiculous? It's so ironic. They will put people to death for saying something against Allah, who is not a god, and for blaspheming Allah. And in, in that act of putting people to death, they are blaspheming God, Jehovah, the Lord God, Jehovah, Yahweh. Now, you get mad at me if you want to, Islam, Muslim, I don't care. I preach Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. And if you're a Muslim, if you're Islamic, and, and you're listening to this, I don't hate you, I love you, but I, 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 I encourage you. Study the Bible for yourself. Make a difference. Break away from those false teachings and discover God for yourself. Get away from those te teachings you've been trained in ever since you were born uh, and, 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 and those, those uh, uh, demonic things you've been saying and that hatred you have for Christians and hatred you have for other people. Break away from it and know the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Jesus also said, I am the way, 
the truth. Listen now. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. So Jesus Christ is Lord. And I praise God that all over the world there are Islamics who are rejecting Islam and are coming into the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I pray that uh, that will happen into the, in this country. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no Allah. There is God the Father, Jehovah, Yahweh, whose son Jesus died on the cross. And anyone who does not believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God is committing blasphemy. That is the real blasphemy. It is blasphemous to deny Jesus Christ as the Son of God. I don't care what religion you're practicing. If you're denying that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you're committing blasphemy. And then, and then the, the thing about blaspheming against the Holy Spirit, God sent the Holy Spirit to be a witness to us that Jesus is the Son of God. God sent Je Jesus said to his disciples before he was crucified, he said, it is expedient that I go away. And if I go away, I will come back and receive you unto myself. So it's expedient. It's necessary, he said, that I go away. But I will send you the comforter. He will guide you into all truth. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, listen, uh, especially those of you who deny the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about you pastors who don't want the Holy Ghost in, in the church. I'm talking about you believers who don't believe in being Holy Ghost filled. I'm talking about those of you who, who don't believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about those of you who don't listen to the voice of the Spirit. I'm talking about those who deny the presence of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, it is expedient that I go away. He told his disciples, I must go away, but I will send you the comforter. He will guide you into all truth. Now, that's the purpose of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> that the Holy Spirit, the second, uh, third person of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, we serve one God who appears in three manifestations, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives witness to Jesus Christ. That's his purpose. And so that voice, uh, some of you say, my conscience, or I heard a voice. Some of you say, well, something, something told me, something told me. Most, oftentimes, that's something that told you something is the Holy Spirit. And you ought to listen to that voice, and he will not tell you anything that's contrary to God or contrary to Jesus or contrary to the word of God. He will affirm Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and so where Islam, they will slaughter you, but they will put you to death. They will cut your head off if you insult their God. And their God is a false God. So you, if you insult a false God... <clears throat> And I insult a false god every time, I, every time I preach because Islam is not a god. He's false. I'm, I'm insulting you. And I don't make an ex any excuse for insulting you. No, no, I make no excuse because I preach Christ Jesus, born of the Virgin Mary, crucified, risen again from the dead, and soon to come back to judge the whole world. And so it pays it that you listen and and. and and receive this word and receive the Lord Jesus Christ and receive the Holy Spirit who will guide you into all truth. And to those of you uh, Christians who don't read your Bible, you're insulting God. You're insulting God by, number one, you're being disobedient. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God. That's in 2 Timothy. A workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. And many of you do not read your Bible. You don't even study the Bible. And we've got, we've got a Bible program that's available to you every Wednesday night, free. And people's lives are being blessed by it. So there is no excuse. Romans 12, 1. No, Roman, Romans, I think, 8, 1. Thou art inexcusable, O oh man. You are without excuse. And we've got to give an account to God. And so this, 
blasphemy. <clears throat> it's, it's the act of insulting God. It's showing contempt for God. Well, how do we show contempt for God? Here's how. We make these affirmations, we swear, we make these covenants, we make these verbal affirmations, and at the same time we're saying them, we don't mean a thing we're doing. We don't mean it. We don't mean it. We make a mockery of God. We pimp God. We use his name in vain. That is called blasphemy. Let me give you an example, <clears throat> and, and, and you might find yourself in this. Okay, I'm from a Baptist background. I was ordained uh, by the Baptist church into the ministry. And this is the Baptist covenant. All over the world, Baptists recite this covenant. This is an affirmation we make to God. It's a pledge that we make to God. It's an act, it's an act of affirming God and our fellowship with one another. And this is a covenant agreement, ladies and gentlemen. It's like a marriage, uh, uh, making a marriage vow. And in the Baptist church in America, once a month, usually in the Baptist church, <clears throat> we recite together. Well, actually, people don't know it. They don't memorize it. Baptists don't memorize this. Let's call, call the spade a spade. Baptists don't memorize this. We open the book to page 8 in most Baptist hymnals, and we read this covenant uh, to one another. But we really don't believe what we're saying. But ladies and gentlemen, this is what Baptists say to God once a month on Sunday. I'm going to read it to you. <clears throat> Having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, angels and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. This is what Baptists agree on. Other denominations have their own covenant, but this is what Baptists agree on, and we make this affirmation before God. Listen to this. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge and holiness, to give it a place in our affections, prayers, and services above every organization of human origin, to sustain its worship ordinances, discipline, and doctrine to contribute cheerfully and regularly as God has prospered us towards its expenses for the support of a faithful and evangelical ministry among us, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of difference of opinion in the church, we will strive to avoid a contentious spirit, and if we cannot unanimously agree, we will cheerfully recognize the right of the majority to govern. That's what Baptists pledge in the presence of God. It's a marriage vow, ladies and gentlemen. It's that we're not finished. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to study diligently the Word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintance, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be kind and just to those in our employ and faithful in the service we promise others, endeavoring in the purity of heart and goodwill towards all men to exemplify and commend our holy faith. We're not finished. We further engage to watch over, to pray for, to exhort and stir up each other unto every good word and work, to guard each other's reputation not needlessly exposing the infirmities of others, to participate in each other's joys, and with tender sympathy bear one another's burdens and sorrows, to cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow to give or take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, being mindful of the rules of the Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew to secure it without delay and through life amid evil report and good report, to seek to live to the glory of God um, who hath called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And then we end our, our, our declaration before God. When we remove from this place, we engage as soon as possible to unite with some other church 
where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Now that is a holy vow, the covenant <coughs> that Baptists make before the Lord. And usually Baptists make this covenant, they pronounce this covenant uh, on, on the, the Sunday that they take the Lord's Supper, the Holy Communion. It's, these are holy vows, ladies and gentlemen, made before the Lord. It's like a marriage ceremony where we stand before the Lord and we recite this before God, the angels, and the people assembled around us. And ladies and gentlemen, I hate to say this, but most Baptists are liars. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. How can you say that, Pastor Carter? I hate to say this. But most Methodists are liars. I hate to say this, but most Catholics are liars. I hate to say this, most Episcopalians, most Pentecostals, most Evangelicals are liars because we stand before God and we pronounce something like this and we make a holy vow before God and we have no intention of carrying it out. None whatsoever we go through the religious motions and ladies and gentlemen it's called blasphemy and we all need to repent we all need to repent from my house to your house from the white house to your house and my house now speaking of the white house ladies and gentlemen this week this week is going to be a great prime example of how blasphemy is prevalent in this nation. Listen carefully to what I'm saying. Sometime this week, it might be tomorrow, probably Tuesday, when they begin the, the impeachment trial for the president. Before the trial begins, listen carefully. 101 people will lay their hands individually on, they lay their left hand on the Bible. 101 people, ladies and gentlemen, leaders in this nation, listen carefully. 101 people individually will lay their hands, left hand on the Bible, and raise their right hand unto God, ladies and gentlemen. And they're going to swear to defend the Constitution. And they're going to swear before God Almighty to defend the Constitution and to listen to the evidence of the trial that's going to take place and to make a godly decision about whether or not to convict the president of impeachment. Ladies and gentlemen, I said 101 people. You, you may say it was only 100 senators. 50 Democratic senators, 50 Republican senators, and one uh, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court who will preside over the Senate in this trial. 101 people will lay their hands on the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, not the Koran, not the Sanskrit, okay, uh, 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 not Huckleberry Finn. Not the, uh, your, your favorite novel, not an Agatha Christie novel. They're going to lay their hands on the Bible, which represents the Word of God, and they're going to raise their right hand up to God. And they are, ladies and gentlemen, these are our leaders. They will swear unto God to obey the voice of God and to do what is right and just in this trial. That is very, very serious, ladies and gentlemen. And, and, and I, can, I can almost prophesy today that most of them will be lying. They will be lying. They will be lying from the time they put their left hand on the Bible. We already got uh, 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 some senators already saying, I'm going to vote this way. They've made up their minds. But they're going to lay their hands on the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, and raise their right hand unto God. Ladies and gentlemen, that is dangerous. That is blasphemy. It is blasphemous to blaspheme against God, blaspheme against 
Jesus, blaspheme against the Bible, which is the word of God, and blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. In other words, they're saying, I'm going to go through this because it's, it's, the, it's the usual thing we do, but I don't care what direction God leads me in. I have made up my mind. No evidence whatsoever is going to convict the president. No evidence is going to help me to vote uh, for him. No evidence is going to help me vote against him. They have made up their minds, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about a a major example of hypocrisy and idolatry and blasphemy that's going to take place this week. And so you and I need to pray that the Spirit of the Lord breaks through, breaks through and bring justice in this nation, that we break through. And the hardest thing to break through in this nation is the political beliefs of people. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't tell you the number of pastors, evangelicals, evangelicals in this nation. I know many of them. I've met many of them, who, who, and I've supported many of their ministries. I can't tell you the number of evangelicals who, who, who preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. They preach from the word of God, not the whole gospel, because some of them don't preach the whole gospel. They preach what, they, what is expedient to most of them. But they will tell you, and I heard one, I heard one, a big name person, say uh, about six months ago, uh, I don't care what happens. I'm voting, voting for Trump, Donald Trump next, next, uh, in 2020. I'm voting for him no matter what. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, and Jackie Fisher just read it, O oh, generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? It's talking to the, a lot of evangelicals. O oh, generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Well, go back to the previous verse. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. A lot of evangelicals are just as corrupt as the tree. If, if, if you're going to support a, a president, a leader, who's a whoremonger, an adulterer, a liar, every time he puts his hand, fingers on his cell phone, he's going to tell somebody a lie. He lies to leaders in foreign nations. He lies to this country. He lies to himself. He, I mean, uh, he, he wouldn't know the truth if the truth came and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But the number of evangelicals in this nation who are going to support this kind of leader and not even challenge the hatred, the racism, let's, let's build a wall, keep the Mexicans out. Let's uh, 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 don't accept any boats coming in from Haiti or, or the Caribbean. Uh, 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 keep the Africans out. Uh, keep keep the, uh, the ignorant Europeans out. Uh, keep the poor out. Build a wall around them. Let's keep America white. Keep America white. Let's make America white again. That ain't going to get it, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I know some of you probably will unfollow me after this message. I don't care. I don't care. Because uh, you can unfollow me now, but you've got to give an account at the judgment. You've got to give an account for not hearing the truth of the word of God. We're Christians. We're supposed to walk in love. How can we as preachers, even evangelicals, support a person who is a hate monger, a person uh, who bashes uh, uh, gays and lesbians, a person who bashes someone because uh, they don't agree with them, a person who will say nasty things about uh, uh, people who, who, whom they even hired in their employ, a person who, if he can't have his way, he's going to say something nasty and vicious. That is not the way Jesus rolls, ladies and gentlemen. That is not the gospel that I see. For The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I say, I say to my friends, my evangelical friends, I say to my friends in the church, I say to my friends who are born again, be faithful to God. Live the word of God. Be doers of the word and not just hearers only. And I'm preaching to myself. I would be a blasphemer. 
I would be an idolater if I held the president as above the law and he can do anything he wants to do and I'm preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and the gospel tells me things I can do and cannot do. No man, no woman is above the law. I would be doing God an injustice if that I did not call the president out on the carpet. And, and for those who are running for office, why should I vote for someone who's going to be an ungodly person and who promotes ungodliness? And so this year, 2020, is going to be very, very interesting. And it's going to be a year of testing of the faith of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ because many of us have stood before God we have made these marriage vows unto the Lord, having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on a profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God, angels and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. How can the body of Christ be so divided? How can we allow blasphemy to come out of our mouths? How can we allow bad fruit to come from a good tree? Jesus is the good tree. And how can we bring forth bad fruit from a good tree? Something's wrong somewhere. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we all need to take a good look at ourselves, not just the president, not this, just the senators, not just the Supreme Court, but we've got to take a good look. The Bible says, let every man examine himself. So examine yourself. The Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, God won't even hear me. And I could go on and on, but I don't have much time. But I could go on and relate blasphemy to marriage. And a lot of, a lot of you... I, we've stood before God and we've stood before the altar with a preacher with a Bible in his hand or her hand, and, and we swore before God we will love and cherish, to have and to hold, in sickness and in health, for better for worse, till death us do part. We swore that before God. That is a, that is a solemn oath, a covenant that we've made before God to love our partner. But yet, and, and many, many of us have, have been through divorce proceedings and suffered divorce. Some of you may have initiated divorce. Some may have been a victim of a divorce. But if we have been any partner to any divorce, we owe God an apology. And we owe that uh, the spouse, our, our previous spouse, an apology. And if you've been a partner of divorce, I, I, I recommend if, it, if it's practical, then, then you go to that, uh, communicate with that person, say, I, I ask you forgive me for being a partner of divorce. But if it's not practical, if it, it will cause more trouble for you to uh, go and do that, then repent. First of all, repent. God, forgive me for being a party to a divorce. I took a holy vow before you to love my spouse for better, for worse, in sickness and in health, for richer, for poorer, till death us do poor. Well, Pastor God, you don't know how, know how he abused me. You don't know this and that. No, I don't. And if you happen to get a divorce, then ask God to forgive you. You don't have to stay in a, an abuse, abuseful situation, but if you've ever been a party of a divorce, you're in the danger of committing blasphemy because you made a vow before the Lord, and I made a vow before the Lord. And we could, we could go on down the line, okay, uh, with children. We promise to raise our children, train up our children in the way in which they should go. And, and uh, uh, many of us are blasphemous in this area, and children to be obedient to the Lord. Children are blasphemous. And then to join a church, to become a part of the church fellowship, we've all entered into covenant agreements. And we've broken those agreements. So we're talking about blasphemy. In other words, we can insult God by the things we say and the things we do. 
and to insult God is a sin. But God is just. God is merciful. And if you have insulted God in any way, ask him to forgive you. Please. Don't get mad at me. Don't throw rocks at the preacher. Be glad that you heard this message. Then ask God to forgive you. And then you say, well, Pastor God, I don't know if I've committed that unpardonable sin. Uh, I, may have, I may have blasphemed and, and there's no forgiveness for me. If you're listening to my voice, you can hear my voice, whether live or by the video, repent. Ask God to forgive you. If, if, if you can hear me today, there's still a place to repent. Repent. Ask God to forgive you and accept the forgiveness. Then honor the Holy Spirit. Worship God. Worship Jesus. Spend the rest of your life giving God the praise, the glory, and the honor. Well, I hope this message has helped somebody. It has certainly helped me. I mean, I wrestled with this message for three or four days, and, 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 and I had to come under conviction first. I had, hey, Tyrone Kirkpatrick, I had to say, ouch. I had to say, ouch, a couple times. But praise God, I'd rather say, ouch, now than the burning hell's fire forever and every wave of flame be licking my body forever and ever. Ladies and gentlemen, let's make the adjustments now. Let's repent and receive the Lord Jesus Christ. And pray for, pray for your senators all across this nation. Pray for our 100 senators and the Chief Justice of the United States that they will hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and hearken to God and pray that God will raise up godliness and righteousness in this nation. Father God, we bless you, we praise you, we thank you, we honor you. Thank you for your word, God. Thank you for your word. Forgive us of our sins. Forgive us for blaspheming you in Jesus' name. Heal us, God, and deliver us, God. And Lord, if there's anyone listening today who's not saved, I ask that they will receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And if anyone's in a backslidden condition, Help them to repent and receive them. Bring healing to them, God. And we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Well, we're going to end the recording, but I want you to stay on, and I'll sure love to answer any questions or